With the plethora of information about CNC or computer numerical controlled devices like uh, three axis machines, uh, four axis lathes, or in my case, a two axis plasma cutter, uh, there is no, there's no surprise that the common DIYer can uh, find kits on the internet or build their own machine from scratch. My name is Frank Macaluso, and I'm going to show you in a very succinct 10 part video series how I built my own CNC two axis plasma with a manual Z axis from scratch. So where does one start with a project like this? Not only the research, but you gotta start with the chassis and the welding. So take a look, stay tuned, and I'll show you exactly how I started this project from the ground up. Thanks. Okay, here we go with the parts list. We have a Samadre 50DP plasma cutter. Here we have a general layout of all the parts we're using, including the half-inch Acme nut. Don't use this, this, or this. And here we have our half-inch Acme rod. Yes, I said half-inch, not 12 millimeter, but these are the only bearings I can find, so I needed to shave down the rod and make them fit on the pillow bearing. Here's the NEMA 23 motors, perfect for X and Y axis. Here we have a Sentent 10 amp high-resolution micro-stepper drive. And it is potted. Here's our 5-axis breakout board with parallel port hookup. XYZ, A, B, and relay. So here's our carriage-style linear bearings. As you can see in this demonstration, it is robust, much more robust than these SBR20, so do not use them. And finally, our Dell Optiplex 980 with the parallel port to hook up to the breakout board, perfect for CNC. And of course our toolbox and the hardware. What I need to do is I just cut four 28 inch pieces here of uh, one inch uh, steel square tubing, uh, 065 wall thickness. That will be the uh, overall chassis frame for the CNC plasma. Um, now I'll show you how to uh, get the, a nice square set up here so we can uh, mount our bearings. So. Before I weld it, I do want to do a couple of quick measurements just to make sure that it's square and that it's not like a parallelogram or a rhombus. Go for 28 inches here, 28 inches square. It's going to give me about 26 inches of actual cuttable area, which is going to be nice. This size for most of the things that I want to do. You can see here that I'm just doing uh, some tacks on each of the corners. Uh, you want to do one corner at a time to prevent the entire piece from warping on you. Um, that and you also don't need to do a full bead of weld. Uh, this doesn't really need to be as structurally strong as one would think. So uh, just a couple of strong tacks in each of the corners one at a time is all you really need uh, in order to get uh, some good adherence. Plasma cutters can be sloppy. That's why I decided to use a plasma cutter first. The thickness of the material doesn't need to be exact. I'm using a pilot arc start, which means that it doesn't, it can be a sloppy piece of metal or it can be slightly wavy and will still very likely cut the metal. Thanks for watching guys. And if you learned something, please give me the feedback. Uh, I'd like to hear it good and bad. Leave the comments uh, down at the bottom there. Uh, like, subscribe, and there'll be a lot more where that's coming from. So thanks a lot and have a great day guys.